హలో డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు దేవి కాస్ కామర్స్ అండ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ అకాడమీ సో ఆడిటింగ్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ వెన్ ఎవర్ ఆడిటర్ ఈస్ గోయింగ్ టు టేక్ అప్ ఎనీ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఆడిట్ వర్క్ ఇన్ ఎనీ కంపెనీ హీ హ్యాస్ టు డూ సమ్ హోంవర్క్ హౌ టు స్టార్ట్ ప్రాపర్ ప్లానింగ్ ప్రాపర్ ప్రోగ్రామింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ రిక్వైర్డ్ బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు కమెన్స్ ఆ బిఫోర్ కమిటింగ్ టు ఎంటర్ ఇన్ టు ఎనీ ఆడిటింగ్ వర్క్ హీ హ్యాస్ సమ్ ప్రిపరేషన్స్ what are those preparation that preparations we are going to talk that is we can say it as a preparation before the commencement of audit so total eight points are there total eight points so if you remember these pre- eight points step by step need not to by heart <coughs> just understand it easily you can remember and you can write it in the exam so before commencement of any audit what are the steps how to plan and how to program it so regarding this eight steps first step is that ascertain the scope of duties auditor has to decide very clearly that what are my duties what are my duties what is the work i am supposed to do if he is having this kind of clarity then he can go ahead according to the wish of the client because you know that uh, auditing types are different types of auditing are there so we have already seen uh, types of auditing different types of audit. which kind of audit you want what are you expecting from me any kind of special instructions or special expectations from the auditor so all these duties he has to confirm it okay then he'll have a clarity about the auditing work that is why first step is that ascertain the scope of duties as an auditor what he has to do he must know that okay then after that second point immediately procure engagement letter he understood the duties then immediately he has to focus on the uh, engagement letter engagement letter means nothing but appointment letter in engagement letter or appointment letter he must have a clarity that uh, auditor is appointed on so and so date for so and so period his remuneration his duties everything must be clearly mentioned if he gets any kind of doubts he must clarify it there, there itself only because tomorrow there may be any kind of misunderstandings okay and uh, may not be properly understood any kind of confusion so to avoid all such kind of things he must have a clarity of appointment letter or engagement letter so this gives the confidence that the auditor is going to commence the work in so and so company once if he gets gets this engagement or appointment letter then third step is that knowledge about the business simply merely getting into the company and taking the accounts books and interacting with the accounts department this is not the duty this is not the right way to do the auditing auditor should have first knowledge about the business what kind of business it is how is the manufacturing process what they are doing it how many branches they are having so total uh, system system business system how it is uh, constructed and how they are doing their activities who are involved in the company activities who are the board of directors and manufacturing process where does it goes and uh, department wise who are the employees are heads of the department like everything in detail he has to get the knowledge then only he can do the auditing work successfully once if he gets the knowledge about the business then he can go for the accounts department now the next fourth step comes to knowledge of the accounting system got the knowledge of the business then accounting system how they are maintaining the accounting system what are the methodologies they are maintaining it and is the company is having any kind of internal auditing system or internal control system is there if internal control system is there how it is working any kind of uh, special focus he needs to pay or special attention he he has to pay so all these things all the knowledge he'll get at this stage only knowledge of the accounting system he must have good knowledge of what kind of accounting system they are maintaining internal control system how they are maintaining all these things he has to get knowledge at this fourth stage only if fourth stage is completed then it comes to the fifth stage he must go to the uh, he must get the list of principal officers who are the principal officers of the company how many are there where do they stay 
and what are their names, what are their phone numbers. So, what kind of accounts uh, records our entire system, he can get it from those people. Like he should have the entire list of officers list. Tomorrow while working this auditing work, if he gets any doubt that system is ready, accounts officers are there, to whom should he contact and where can, where can he get the information, where, where can he get the uh, clarification, more information, anything that is ready because list of principal officers he prepared it, it is ready, right. Next after that he has to focus on the knowledge and technical details. Knowledge and technical details means generally sometimes uh, auditor is not much expert like uh, entire audit, uh, entire company activities and technical knowledge all these things he may not be. But sometimes as per the requirement he should get some knowledge also. What kind of knowledge? Technical technical knowledge. So, technical details he can obtain it from the right person. Who is the right person? He just he can contact it, he has to get the knowledge because to get the clarification of the accounts. If he has knowledge then only he can understand the accounts, how they are maintaining it, what they have put and where they are getting the amount, all these things they will get, he will come to know. That is why he has to focus on few aspects of the technical aspects like technical details also he has to get if required so that he can work 100 percent. And uh, after that enquiry into special circumstances if any, any special circumstances he has to enquire about it. Suppose say small example I am giving you, if this auditor is appointed in place of previous auditor, in place of another auditor this auditor is appointed then he has to get the information from the previous auditor also because he has lot of command, he did auditing work from the same company. He can be in touch with the previous auditor, he can get the information, he can get the advices, he can get the clarification, everything it is possible. If any such kind of special circumstances are there, he has to focus. Nobody will guide, nobody will tell him do this, do that. It is the minimum responsibility and it is the duty of auditor to be perfect, to be thorough before going to the auditing work, okay. Are you getting it? So, that is about enquiry into the special circumstances if any. Last point is that instructions to the client before commencing auditing, he has to give instructions to the cl client. What instructions? That saying that I am going to commence my auditing work on so and so date. So, what you have to do? You means client, what the client has to do? So, that instructions, who has to give? Auditor has to give it to the client. First thing is that under that inst instructions, accounting, accounts should be finalized. If accounts are finalized, then only auditing is going to start. We have learned it on the very first day. Accounts are ready, then auditing will start. So, tell the client that accounts are finalized or not. Finalized means balance sheet is ready. Accounts are everything is ready once if he touches that auditing work and that accounts books or accounts records will not be given to anyone because auditing was started. You cannot do any kind of alterations, manipulations, changes, okay. So, that is not possible. That is why he always has to give a uh, strict instructions that if accounts are finalized, hand over it to me, I will start my auditing work. First point. Second point under this, what is the instruction he has to give is necessary schedule he has to ask. Necessary schedule means few items which are not included in the trial balance. So, those kind of transactions also he must have knowledge. What kind of transactions means example like debtors, who are the debtors, creditors, how many, how many are there bad debts and also related to the reserve for doubtful debts uh, and reserve for doubtful debts, doubtful debts, okay. All such kind of related to entire bad debts and outstanding expenses, prepaid expenses, prepaid income and cost price, cost price of the stock or material and market price of the stock or material, cost price, market price both and stock sheet entire stock sheet and also capital expenses, 
and revenue expenses, valuation of stock, these are all necessary schedule, which are not clearly mentioned in the accounts, but he must have the knowledge about this. So, this also the auditor has to ask the client to give a clarity about such kind of necessary schedule also. So, this is, these are the instructions to be given to the client. Then if the client is ready to give, then he has completed all his work, planning and everything is properly come prepared, then he can start his work. Am I clear? Take a screenshot or note down. Practically, it is very important topic and also examination point of view, it does not matter if you get it just simply uh, by remembering step by step, yes, first he has to do, do this, know the duties, then after that he has to get the appointment letter, then after that accounts officers list like can remember that is not a problem at all, but you should understand properly. So by the way, please forward this videos to all the students because it is free of cost. So, forward this and also do subscribe to our channel, support our channel and in the coming classes you will find more auditing related, not only auditing, lot more subjects I am planning it. Stay connected and practice well throughout your semester before exams, just revise it, okay? Good luck.